Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at some area problems. Um, so we have some example formulas here that are pretty common. Uh, at least most of these are pretty common things that you would encounter um, in an algebra course. Uh, you have things like your triangle. Uh, the area is one half base times height. So the height is the perpendicular distance from one edge to the bottom to the opposite side. Again, it should meet that bottom side with a right angle. Uh, as long as you have the length of the side that your height is perpendicular to, it can actually be any height of this triangle, but typically it's given in the sort of upright position. Uh, the trapezoid, you have um, a height specified somewhere, and then you also have two sides, the two parallel sides are your two bases. Uh, your rectangle, you've probably encountered this before, it's just length times width. Um, the circle, we saw a picture of the circle in the perimeter video. Uh, the radius is the distance from the center to one edge. Um, and then the ellipse is a little less common uh, in terms of an area formula, but it's very easy to calculate. Um, the entire distance, uh, the shortest distance across an ellipse is called the minor axis the half of that, so it's like a diameter, half of that is the B value. So it's like a radius, but in the shortest distance. And then the longest length across the ellipse is called the major axis. And half of that, again, like a radius, um, is the A value that goes into our formula. So let's look at some specific examples. So here we have an example of a rectangle. Uh, we have one side is eight and one side is five. So the area of that rectangle is going to just be eight times five, which is 40 units, whatever those units are in. Uh, in the case of our circle, Again, using our circle formula, the area is pi r squared. Here, our radius is given as 10. So we have pi times 10 squared or 100 pi. Um, for our triangle, we have our base and our height. So the area of the triangle is going to be um, one half times the base times the height. So five times six is 30 times a half is 15. So 15 units, whatever our units are in, could be centimeters, could be inches in that particular problem. And the parallelogram is was not on my list, but it's very similar, kind of like a cross between the rectangle and the triangle. Um, it is also base times height. We need the distance that is perpendicular to the base. So the area of the parallelogram is base times height. And so in this case, it's seven times nine or 63 units. Now, in a more advanced class, after you learn trigonometry, then you'll get formulas to figure out what this height is um, just based on the sizes of the sides or the information involved with the angles here. Um, but at this point, we don't have that access to that necessarily. And so what we need is the actual height specified for us in these two examples. Now we can take this basic information and then we can use it to calculate the um, areas of objects that are more complicated. So if we have information about these heights and distances, then we can calculate not only things like the perimeter, we can also calculate things like the area. So let's label some of these shapes with some distances and then we can go ahead and we can calculate the values. So let's say that this um, 
distance right here is two. And this distance right here is three. Um, we're going to assume that these two towers here on this shape are symmetric. So we'll also call that a two. And then we need the height here. Let's call that seven. Now we don't need to specify this bottom length because we know that this height, this distance, this distance, and this distance are going to add up to that value. So what we would end up with then for the area, we're going to basically separate this out into three separate rectangles. So the first one is going to be two times seven because it's two across here and seven high. Plus this middle section, well, actually I'm going to need one more distance, which is this distance right here. So let's call that four. So now if I know that this is four, that means that this distance here is three. So that'll be three times three. And then the final section over here, that'll be two times seven. And if we add these all up, we get 14 plus 14 plus nine, 28 plus nine is going to be 30 seven units. Again, whatever inches, centimeters, the problem is specified in. Uh, if we were to calculate the perimeter, as we saw in a previous video, we would know that this bottom side is also seven, and then we would be able to add up all of the individual sides to get the perimeter. Now, for this um, trapezoid on top of a rectangle, we again are going to specify maybe this is a four, this is a six, and then we would need the height here. Let's call that a two, and then we'll also call this a two. Now, if we're gonna add up, again, we separate it out into two different areas. So the top section up here, this is our trapezoid. So our area of the trapezoid is one half, four plus six, that's our top at, and our bottom bases. They're the ones, the sides that are parallel times two for the height. And then the bottom rectangle is just two times six because it has a height of two and it's a rectangle. So it's six across. And if we add up that information, our half and our two cancel. We get 10 for the trapezoid and we get 12 for the rectangle, which gives us 22 units. Now there is more, one more formula I just wanted to briefly mention, and we're gonna go through an example of it, although it's not usually introduced um, uh, until sort of later in the course after you've done um, square roots and things like that. And it is a little complicated. So sometimes it's a supplement or it's way, way late in the homework exercises. They may not even talk about it in the book, but they simply mention it in some of the homework problems. And that is Heron's formula. Now, the nice thing about Heron's formula is that it allows you to figure out the area of a triangle uh, without actually knowing the, any of the angles or the height directly. Um, if you just need to know the lengths of the sides. But it is a somewhat complicated formula. As you can see, it involves a bunch of multiplications under a square root. And there is a, a separate calculation um, that you make this S value in order to make Heron's formula less messy than it would be even otherwise. So let's go ahead and go do that example just so we can see it done once. S is going to be the sum of the sides divided by two. So that's gonna be four plus five plus seven divided by two. And it is not that uncommon to get an odd value for this, which would give you a decimal uh, when you divide it by two. I've chosen these values so that they don't um, give you a decimal. Uh, this is five and seven is 12 and six is 16. So I got an eight um, and I did that just to make the calculation a little easier. Um, 
but that is something that you're going to occasionally encounter. And it, again, it's one of the things that makes this formula a little bit messier. Now, here uh, for the area, we're going to calculate S, and then it's going to be S minus A, which is the length of our first side, times S minus 5, length of our second side, and then S minus 7, which is our third side. So what's that going to simplify to? We're going to get 8 times 4 times 3 times 1, which is going to be 8 times uh, 4 is 32 times 3 is going to be 96. Um, do we have any common factors of 96? I believe we can take out a 16, which is going to give me the square root of 16 is 4, and 96 divided by 16 is 6. And so the area of this particular triangle is 4 square root of 6. Um, Again, something that if you have trigonometry, you can establish, you can figure out what the height is. And probably in a lot of cases, you'll end up with a square root, even with relatively standard angles. Um, and you'll you'll be able to, to, to verify this calculation after you've acquired sines and cosines and things. But for right now, um, this is a way of calculating the area. Notice that the height is not a nice integer value because it produced a square root that we didn't have when we were just looking at the sides. Uh, one half base times height assumes that you know you could get square roots if the height has a square root in it, but they usually for these problems give you nice whole numbers, um, and so they make the unstated sides the ones that involve the square roots. But Again, this is somewhat a more advanced formula. The um, sort of trapezoid is usually the most complicated one that you end up encountering when you do problems of this sort in most algebra class.